Hi, I'm John O'Loughlin, Sustainability and Technical Manager with Grass and Lego. In today's video, we're discussing fertilizer spreader calibration and bulk density. I'm joined by my colleague Ian Connington to discuss bulk density first. So Ian, what is bulk density? Bulk density is the weight of a given volume of fertilizer. So essentially you're determining how heavy your fertilizer is. Brilliant. And Ian, why is that important? Why should farmers know the bulk density of their fertilizer? Well, all fertilizers vary in their bulk density, so this will affect the spreadability of your product. Okay, so it's really important for the spreadability of the product, which is uh, key to accurate spreading um, for the environment and the uh, economic cost of fertilizer going forward. Ian, how do you actually do a bulk density test? A bulk density test is very simple, John. We just collect our sample. Ideally, you want to collect your sample from free-flowing fertilizer. So essentially, as your fertilizer is being emptied into your spreader, you take a jug, a bucket, whatever, collect your sample, and then you're going to measure it out into your graduated cylinder or any device, any instrument that can accurately measure one liter. So I'm using the digital scales, so I can actually use the scales to tear the weight, which, takes, which subtracts the weight of my measuring device. If you're doing this manually, just take a note of the weight of the cylinder and subtract this at the end. So then I pour in my sample, So that's a thousand mil there, which is your one liter. So that's given me a measurement of 760. So what I do then is I take my calculator, my 760 divided by 1000, because I filled one liter capacity, gives me 0 0.76. So the bulk density of my product, which today was urea, is 0 0.76. Thanks very much, Ian. I think that's a really practical um, tool to be able to calculate for farmers. Yeah, and it's a very simple process. Yeah. And that information is really, really important because as we have mounting pressure around fertilizer in relation to the environment and cost, it's really important that we get the simple things right and we're able to practically figure out what we need to do on farm in relation to spreader setup. Bulk density is a key part of fertilizer spreader calibration. Next, Ian is going to talk to my colleague John Corbett about calibrating your fertilizer spreader. So I'm here with John Corbett, agronomist with Graston Agro, and John is going to take us through a few important steps in calibrating your fertilizer spreader. So John, tell us why is it important to take the time to set up your fertilizer spreader? Well, what's important is that basically if you've other machines like your mower or a slurry tank, if something breaks on the day, you know straight away. The problem is with a fertilizer spreader is by the time that we see the results, it's often three and four weeks past that. And look, what's very important when we look at spreading up uh, setting up a fertilizer spreader is to look at two fronts. One being to look at the actual spreading pattern. The second being looking at our spreading rate. So basically how much fertilizers, fertilizer is going out per acre. So what are you looking for in a spreading pattern? Basically what you're looking for is that for every square meter that the same amount of fertilizer is going, going there. And look how, how, we, how we go around doing that is looking at basically the machine that you're using. If we look at this machine here today, we are very much looking at basically uh, spreading veins. As well as that, we have to look at the speed of the rotation of the discs, which is set by our PTO. What's very important when it comes to our spreading veins is basically that we get good flow from the spreading from the fertilizer. This is done by having it in such, such a situation that the fertilizer is able to flow gently across it. I often explain it on farm as being the difference of having flat concrete and groove concrete in the yard and the way that the fertilizer, like, like a tennis ball, would move across that. So if you take it there now, flat concrete, tennis ball will move freely across it and come to a gradual stop. Whereas when it comes to a grooved yard, the ball is going to come to a much faster stop. This, this can be seen then when it comes the same when it comes to a vein. So basically, this is a worn vein that I would have taken off a fertilizer spreader. As you can see here, you can see rip, the rippling effect coming across that vein the same way that groove concrete has will affect the movement of that tennis ball. So in reality what you're going to have it in this scenario is the fertilizer will be unable to go to the full width of the spreading pattern. And this is very important as what we find on when we sp we're spreading fertilizer is we are typically spreading fertilizer twice the working width of the machine. So if it's the case that we are we are spreading fertilizer at 21 meters the furthest granule has to go up to 42 meters. This is where we lose out on when it comes to worn veins then, that the, the fertilizer spreader has an inability to get the fertilizer out to those further widths. It comes to the stage then with this pitting that we could actually see holes develop in the veins. 
which would clearly dis uh, disturb the rate, the, the pattern of the fertilizer being spread in the field. As well as that, we have to look at basically the, the shape of the granules that we are spreading. What we, what we would like to see is a constant granule size. And for this, I'd often use this tool, which basically what, what you use it for is you fill up one side of it. And basically, it, it, is, it has the ability to sieve out the granule sizes to their proportionate. And what we want, as we can see here, which, which is from a compound fertilizer is, we have a large proportion of the fertilizer with between 3.2 and 5 millimeters. We, as well as that then, we have a very small proportion then of fertilizer in smaller areas and a small parts of dust then. This is very important then in getting good roll and, good, and to have good flow of the fertilizer through the machine. Bulk density then is critical. And as, as Ian and John would have gone through, we have to take into account basically the difference that we find with bulk density in the field. They would have taken a sample of urea, which had a bulk density of about 0 0.76. Whereas, if you compare it to the likes of, of pasture or cutsward, which would have a bulk density of closer to one, it means in reality that in the case of two half litre bottles, there's going to be 100 grams difference between them. This is going to be essential in basically getting a good spreading pattern, as we want a situation where as I've said before, an even distribution of fertilizer. This means we have to be looking forward to changing the vein settings on the machine because there will be a significant difference in getting a correct spreading pattern in a fertilizer which has a bulk density of 0 0.76 and one that has a bulk density of closer to one. If we were to leave the same vein settings between the likes of a urea and the likes of a pasture sward, that typically the fertilizer could be spreading a difference of about five meters which is going to be critical going forward that we can, we can understand how fertilizer is moving to get better distribution out in the field. So regarding spreading rate, John, what is important? Basically, to have actual information on what the actual size of fields are. Because what, what you find a lot out in farm is, especially when it comes to silage ground, we think we might have 23 acres of silage, but in reality, in the actual, what is actually cut might be closer to 20. And that definitely has a difference then when it comes to actually figuring out have we done our job and have, if it's the case, we're putting out one bag of fertilizer per acre, that that has actually occurred at the end of the day. And with regards to that then, we ha having the correct acreages in the field is incredibly important and as well as that, having an accurate forward speed. Because without those two pieces of information, we can't even begin to start in figuring out what we are actually doing. So with regards to forward speed, you take a tractor that you're trying to set up at 10 kilometers per hour if it's a case then that we alter that by one in reality that we are going either one kilometer per hour faster or slower than this we give actually a difference of 10 percent when it comes to our spreading rate which which is a vast which is vastly different especially when you take silage going in 20 30 acres going out in the morning and as well as that it's critically important too on your on grazing ground to make sure that we know exactly that we have actually gone out with say 16 or 17 units in this rotation. So basically when it comes to our forward speed what I would be saying is that a lot of the time we shouldn't base our information on the forward speed that is available from the tractor because this can be manipulated either by the changing changing tyre sizes and be wheel slip basically and the weight of tyres going down so you take it there tractors are five or six years old having a different actual forward speed than that which is recorded in the dash. One possible solution to getting an accurate forward speed for your tractor would be to use the likes of a GPS unit which will also in that scenario give you an accurate representation of your spreading weight going forward that you, that you have the ability to spread accurately at 16, 20 and 24 metres going forward. Another possible solution to getting an accurate forward speed is to do a 100 meter calibration run with your tractor. So John, can we take a look at some of the practical steps when setting up your fertilizer spreader? So now I'm going to go through the fertilizer spreader setup on the tractor. What's very important to note on this is that the, the, uh, these figures are going to change between machine to machine and manufacturer's specifications. So the best thing to do is look at the operator's manual for your machine to go through that and that will give you the most exact information for your actual model. The main thing when it comes to basically the fertilizer spreader uh, setup is the geometry of the machine onto the tractor. So that's all about basically keeping, keeping the disc level at a certain height. When it comes to an Amazon machine, this is 80 centimeters of the disc above the ground. 
For, for my own use, what I use is basically a chain on the bottom of the machine, which when the last link of this is dragging on the ground, that tells me that the machine is 80 centimetres above the ground. As well as that then, it is very important to make sure that the, the machine is level from left to right. I usually base this information firstly on looking at the, the backboard of the fertilizer spreader compared to the, the roof of the tractor. And when it's a scenario where these two are level, that's a good place to start from. Following that, I take out the likes of a measuring tape, or like that now you can also use the, the, a preset length of bamboo or a length of timber to let you know what height you're working at. So at this stage, what you want to have a case is that 80 centimetres at the front and the back of the discs and the same going from left to right. So, what you, so using the likes of a measuring tape, just to look at, at two points on the disc at the back, just to see, and as well as that, to look at the front of the machine as well, to make sure that this is consistent. And like I said, check that on both sides of the machine. Following on from that, we look at our, our vein settings on this machine. Where I get this base information from is the app, on, the app which I have on my phone, which has a list of the fertilizers which I'm using. Uh, following this then, I go out into the field and put down a set of trays or fertilizer mats so that we can get a better, more accurate information on what vein settings we need to, to put out to make sure that we have an even distribution of that fertilizer. As well as that, as I would have gone through with Ian before, it is very important to make sure that our rate is going out correctly. This can be done a number of ways on this type of machine, one being to take the taking off of a disc and measuring over a period of time the amount of fertilizer that flows through it. To get an accurate representation of the rate that we're going to spread, I know at this stage that I'm going to be spreading at 21 meters. Based on the operator's manual, I've been able to work out that 1 to 40 of a hectare is covered at 10 km per hour at, at just under 9 seconds. This, in reality, is done by basically taking off our, spread, our two spreading discs, putting the machine running as normal, and collecting the amount of fertilizer that's dropped through the, through the machine during that time frame. This can also be done by another piece of apparatus on the machine, which does a ver very similar job, rather than having to take off the actual discs from, from this machine. At this point, what it uses is the free-flowing ability of the fertilizer from the hopper, where it has a, a side-mounted bucket to, contain, to, to collect the contents of the fertilizer, as well as that, a valve on the side of the machine so that you can easily open and close it without having to take off the disc. This gives us an, a better representation of the actual flow rate of the machine. When this is all done, we now know that we are able to bring the machine to the field. Once we've completed the base setup of the machine in the yard, it is very important then to verify that we are in fact spreading correctly and getting good even spread pattern over our working width. To do this, we must use test trays. Today, I have two sets of test trays with me. One, a conventional set, with basic holders, which, which I place at the full, width, full spreading width of the machine. In this way, I will be driving over the first set of them and I will drive back over the last set of them. The results of these are then held within the test tubes that you would have seen earlier. As well as that, I have a set of photographic test trays that are designed specifically for, for the Amazon machine in question. With these, as well as an app on, on your phone, you are able to take pictures of the mats. These will then tell you whether, whether your spreading pattern is correct. Thanks very much to Ian and John. These are simple practical steps that can be implemented on every farm to improve the economic and environmental sustainability.